everybody. Welcome to a brand new forum from uh, 99 WNRR. And welcome to this. We haven't got a name yet, but we'll probably put it in. But right to below me right there is one and only Jackie Raven every Saturday. The gentleman all the way now, if I'm pointing that way, to my uh, corner over here, of course, is Scott Nocon, who is with you every Tuesday night. And to my right, your nope. left or whatever you're watching right now is Miss <laughs> Effects from the Bad Hair Days every Wednesday night. I am Artifacts from the Launchpad Live every Thursday. And we thought we would give you our top tens. And we don't know where these go, but we're going to have a lot of fun with this. Um, they're going to be going live at some point in time soon where you guys will get to comment live on the chat with us. Good to have you with us. Let's get to our top 10 all-time favorite rock songs and why all right um what did what was the one thing that surprised everybody in doing this list there's too surprised many surprised you i should say when you were putting the list together way too many hmm. I mean, there's a lot we can call our favorite true did was there what was the criteria that you guys had i was sticking with metal Yes. Um, if I did another list of strictly rock, uh, that would take a little bit longer. There's a lot of classic rock songs I like, but metal is kind of second nature. So for me, there weren't a lot of surprises. Uh, a lot of these songs have been kind of in my in my head for years. So it was more a matter of just sitting down and reflecting. And when I put it together, probably you know, my number 10 might get a lot of, huh, who? But that's okay. Um, and there's a reason for all of them. Right. I, I may have covered more of the classic rock. So while you, you covered my metal, Scott, I think I went back a little bit further and have more of like the historical, um, why are they the best written songs ever? I don't know that I necessarily did my favorites. I did what makes these either so mm. many millions of people sing them know them love them or were they really breakthrough musically or lyrically it's kind nice. of where i was at yeah. too jack what would what do you what criteria did you have um i'm kind of along with scott mostly metal obviously um but i kind of am on those the same lines of 80s metal and stuff like that so mm -hmm. um and i have a couple of classic well one classic for sure but mine will be no surprise to anybody because i i play them okay. a lot <laughs> okay so let's go around the room and we as we go ladies first and we got c and j so christine miss fex first number 10 who you got all right, I'm going to start with my bottom up because that's where I started writing my explanation. That's why we started number 10. All right. Um, <laughs> yes. I moved I was going to start with five, but thank you. I that. moved this from my guilty pleasures <laughs> list down to my best written rock list. Um, Sticks, Come Sail Away. Dennis DeYoung. <laughs> this made Sticks one of the greatest arena rock bands ever. A 220 ballad, and then it kicks into big guitars, big chorus, and it's something that if you know it, you can't help but sing it. Can't argue with Jack. Yeah. What do you got? Huh? What do you got at number 10? Uh, My number 10, believe it or not, I know this is going to sound crazy, but it's Iron Maiden, Somewhere in Time. Okay. Yeah. That is any recollection or reason why? Huh? Any recollection of the song you when you heard it the first time? Reason why? Why would you put that? Uh, uh, that um, I was just starting to get into uh, Egyptology at the time, and um, that album plus the album prior was all about Steve Harris and his venture into his love of Egyptol uh, Egyptology as well. So he talked about going back in time to observe that part of history total geek moment but you get what i mean All right. yeah, cool. scott what do you got i'm going to throw in an honorable honorable mention if i may and then quick sure. into number 10 
So Spirit Box, Holy Roller, honorable mention. Um, for yeah, me, yeah. Love about three years ago, when I heard that, it, it just jumped off the page. Uh, it was, you know, certainly not the first time there was, you know, a female-led band. Of course not. But the, the resurgence, and I'll just say band, because it doesn't, female, male, doesn't matter. It's it's a band, right? It's It's killer music. But hearing that song and just how it started and just how eerie it kind of reminded me of like an old mid eighties horror film a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it was shocking. And, and it, and it ended up being, I think 2020, it was my top song on my show for the year. So that band just, and now finally they're, they're getting their due. They're on a tour with um, Papa Roach and Ginger. Is it Ginger? They played with Ginger too, but I'm drawing a blank. They're coming through here in October, um, sure. but but they're playing sheds, they're playing arenas now, and it's it's well deserved. I think they really set a Agreed. whole new style and emotion. Ten, going completely opposite direction as far as just hardcore nails. You will never be one of us. This song's about a minute and a half, Ooh. and it just starts at ten and just shoots all the way through. Ooh. And I was. Um, same thing. When I heard it, it's like I just played it over and over again, probably 20 times in a row. It was only a minute and a half, so it didn't take that much time really to do it. But again, <laughs> it just stood out. And then I was able to, um, they, they still, they're, they're still just a, you know, a small club band and that's okay. But there was just this fierceness in that song that cut through that, again, you bring up the name. Most people have no idea who they are. Mm -hmm. but you see them live and you do not forget it. You can take that. You can totally take that. Okay. Um, this was tough. This was really hard because what do you do when you love so much and you respect so much? And when you look at a list like that and you're like, Oh my God, you know, what's, what, what do I put here? Best written songs, you know, uh, production, chart takes or overall influence that it had and i think i had to throw influence in there which is usually not popular when it comes to other stuff but influence to me was key because that that means the song had that staying power to change the industry in some manufacturer um i have a quick uh quick list of hits of um honorable mentions like scott did i had my list i did i, I couldn't make that didn't make the list Rhiannon, Barracuda, Tom Sawyer, Space Oddity, Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For, and Living in the City. Living in the City almost made the top 10. So I went rock and blues a little bit too. I went outside. And Stevie Wonder's uh, Living in the City is one of the most amazing songs uh, ever written. But number 10, um, 1983. The first time we heard multi-layered vocals uh, used in the way that they did in a in a power pop song that was driving, and it changed the industry, uh, I think, forever because I think it started with this song for metal and it's photographed by Def Leppard. Mm. Yeah, mm. well, just well crafted, powerful, melodic hook beyond hook. Uh, a video to go along with it and it literally changed metal in the way we listen to metal from that point on so says you <laughs> i think it did i think it did it opened i think quiet riot opened the gateway for metal but as far as being a sellable item mm -hmm. yeah pyromania took it to took it from and you know take it from there whatever Okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to number nine. What do we got, Chris? All right. My next one is, I think I scrolled up too far. Um, What song did I give you a couple of seconds ago? Let's see. Sticks. All right. American Pie, Don McLean. Why American Pie? Eight and a half minutes that millions of American know by heart. It's a storyteller. It's a hybrid of poetry, folk music, a beer hall chant, and high-level rock. Wow. Wow. Give it that. 
You didn't yeah. use, did you use Jasper for that? No, I, I may have minced some other's words, but. Um, a good, uh, that's, I, that's a very good description. It, it's, it, it is taking a factual historical thing or things that happened and kind of like in the way that Billy Joel does that too. I love a good storyteller. Um, like I love Nikki Six for that. If you can, I love the rock operas, which we'll get to yeah. down the road. Um, but I think that for as many millions of Americans as know this song front to back and for it to be just like Bohemian Rhapsody, which of course will be on this list, um, eight and a half minutes long to have the respect and and the ability for airplay that it did and the longevity that it's had. Um, I give that kudos. So that's my number nine. You know, like, I love how the song spoke to the time and spoke to a, several different issues. If you look yes. at the political song. Um, yeah, I agree. Jackie. Um, so my number nine is actually uh, Rob Halford from Judas Priest when he went out on his own. Um, and this is off of the, the Resurrection album called Love the One You Hate. And he did that track with Bruce Dickinson and mm -hmm. Jeff Tate from Queensryche. Mm -hmm. And it was basically a big old F you to all those people who said he couldn't do it on his own. Um, you know, plus it was still the whole question about his sexuality and all this other crap uh, where people, you know, didn't think he would be able to achieve what he just because of his sexuality. So uh, he produced two albums during that time, uh, which were phenomenal. And uh, Love the One You Hate is just it's one of the, it's one of the best tracks off, off of both of those uh, phenomenal EPs. So, yeah, that's it. Nice. Scott. <laughs> So I'm definitely not, maybe in some topics, I go deep. But uh, after Chris's uh, deep dive on Don McLean, I won't go as deep. And actually, I love that because our 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 interest and our likes are just so, so different. Bringing yeah. them together really, again, I think is a is an awesome representation of what this uh, what this show is going to be and what the station is so uh mm. so that's pretty cool so number nine lamb of god laid to rest oh you jerk the <laughs> explanation <laughs> yeah exactly yeah the explanation yeah. <laughs> really doesn't go any further than okay let me first time that. i heard it it sticks with me so that, that that's kind of where i'm at with music it's it's really a, a feel right it, i really internalize it a lot um, it can certainly drive into influence. It can certainly drive um, into what was happening at that you know point in my life. Something that you kind of anchor to. Um, but for this one, again, to this day, I will listen to Lamb of God probably a few times a week, and I will see them every time they come through town because mm -hmm. there's something about there's so much power, but at the same time, it's to me it's just refreshing. It's, it's my, when I say that to my wife, she goes, you know, and she, and she's into music, she knows music, but she goes, I can't believe that this is like relaxing, I, you know, but, but it is, I just enjoy it so mm -hmm. much that the heavy side of it is more just the power and the energy and the feel behind it. Lamb nine. Nine, number nine. Cool. Nice. Nice. Number nine, number nine, uh, 1980. It was a, Probably a make or break, considering what happened to this band. Uh, it's a situation that would kill most bands. But I always open, like, you know, to me, there's few songs that open in a certain way. And this was so simple. The, just, the, just the chuck of the guitar. Jump, 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 hi hat. You see. Da da da. Da da da. Back in Black, yeah, um, you know, obviously it played in every arena. Uh, but when I think about that record, which was the first record I ever bought on cassette, actually, 
Um, Ooh, showing your age. Yeah, I am showing my age. <laughs> I actually had the guts to get on my bike and drive when I when it was released at the ripe old age, I believe I was 13. Oh, wow. 13, 12, something like that. And uh, got on my bike. Actually, yeah, 13. Got on my bike and uh, drove and pedaled 10 miles to the nearest, coolest, called the Platypus, uh, to pick up this tape. And had my first Walkman and listened to it. And by, I was finished with, the, with it by the time I got back. Wow. So I was able to play the whole thing and listen to it. And just being able to hit those first pedals, it, it's memorable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but as far as what was on the line for that band and for them to, to crush it like that was uh, triumphant. So Back in Black, number nine for me, uh, best rock songs of all time. Um, all right, we'll talk, we'll give a little bit of break after eight, but let's go to number eight right now. And this is going to be a little, little switch for me. Uh, might surprise a few people, but uh, Chris, what do you got for eight? Number eight, Comfortably Numb, Pink Floyd. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. <laughs> Gotta give props for that. Well, nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, well the, uh, the song is the, the song that <clears throat> I, I deem the best by bar none, the best guitar solo ever written yeah a guitar tonality is definitely top on the list for reason why um and then i think the fact that if you kind of follow the way it was written um spontaneous is a good word um it comes up often when talking about this song there was a lot of improvisation in the leading up to the final recording of this song. Um, and I think that's important because we think that everybody sits down and pens something and, and perfects it before they get to that stage. This song has been through so many uh, rewrites, but out of just whatever the spontaneous output he had was, uh, it just outright artistry, the whole song. Yeah. Jackie, thoughts on, yeah. thoughts on that track? Huh? Thoughts on that track? Of, um, you know what? That is one of those tracks definitely that is synonymous. I mean, just, you don't even really, it just, it's a track that if, if you hear, you're like, oh, I remember this win sort of thing. Mm. Does that make, make sense? Yeah. Maybe? yeah, absolutely. What do you got for number eight? I have Trivium. <laughs> All right. Yes, Trivium. I have Trivium. Uh, not that they're coming here this Friday and I'm going to go see them, but um, <laughs> um, they're going to be in Hampton Beach, Scott, believe it or not, this Friday. Okay. Um, uh, <clears throat> one of my favorite tracks by them is Like Flies, obviously. And um, it is just a very... But it seems Trivium can't do anything small. It seems that most of their tracks are upwards of five minutes, if not longer. Um, but this is just one of those powerful songs that you literally, like I tell people, you can grab a glass of tequila in front of a, you know, a bonfire or something, and it makes you think about life. So um, it's a very hard, powerful vocal track. Um that I absolutely love, and it's. It, I would. I almost want to say it was one of the tracks that kind of um, spearheaded Trivium to a degree, yeah. um, maybe not so quite so. But when that track came out, a lot <clears throat> of people started noticing Trivium more. So, um, and they put out really good stuff since. So, that is my number eight. <clears throat> nice, Scott. What do you got? So you were talking about nineteen eighty three. I think that was the year you were mentioning. You're talking about riding a bike to the record store. So I, yeah. I have the same memory riding to the Music Plus. It was probably 10 miles too, just coincidentally. I think all, all record stores were at least 10 miles from any house. <laughs> so I remember riding there back when music came out on a Tuesday, right? Uh, right. Back in right. the day. Record day and, was Tuesday. And, and I true. picked up Peace of Mind from Iron Maiden. Oh, I okay, that's it. We need to And the track... And the track I have at number eight is Where Eagles Dare. Of course. I love that. 
from both sides, the cassette, the CD, the album to the left of me, but you know, that whole record, but that, that song just stands out as one. It's just a bit stands, stands above everything else to me. And I remember going camping. I remember riding my bike. I remember being in my room and, you know, there's, there's not a memory of that, of that year that doesn't have that whole album wrapped around it. Best, uh, best made an album made. I say yes. For me, it is. I know some go directly to, and if I could pan my camera, mm. Number of the Beast, Hallowed, mm. Hallowed being the number one song all time, if you look at most publications and most people. But I go um, Power Slave. So, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I go you Power know, But, but I, I would jump probably into Peace of Mind, Power Slave, and then Number of the Beast would be in there somewhere in time. I like that as well. So, yeah, it's a great record. Yeah. Interesting. Very, very. Uh, number eight comes from a very maligned record because it's probably, if from my opinion, probably the worst produced metal of al album of all time. I can't stand it. Hate the record. Uh, it was a change for the band that I thought was bad, but one track stood out and became just an all time anthem. And as much as I want to kill this song. <laughs> I have to when I when I went back and I just and I just just listened to it for the purity of it, the simplicity of it, the brilliance of it, and going, man, there's there's not a there's not a melody and a hook like this, and that's home sweet home. <laughs> hey, nice. As much as I can't stand a record, and as much as that song's overplayed, as much as I can't even I don't even like the song. But for the simplicity and that and what it's done, uh, the solo is memorable. I mean, and the melody line and the hook is just forget it. it, mm -hmm. it it'll it, it'll stand a test of time. Mm -hmm. It just does. So from a very core record, <laughs> and that's me saying that I am not a fan of theater or pain. Interesting. <laughs> not a fan, but home sweet home has to be recognized as one of the best written songs of all time. Interesting. Okay. Right. Um, anything surprising uh, when we get to, so far, we get to eight uh, in our list. It's something that you sit there when you, when you start thinking, did, when you went back over the list, did you do a double take and go, hey. or how many times did you change out a song before you made it final? Oh, a couple of times. I'm like, uh, no, I don't like that. Let's put this one in there. And then, of course, Scott had a couple that I, I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> let's that crap out. <laughs> they can stay in. That's okay. Um, the only one I changed, I only changed one song of mine. Pretty stat. What about you, Chris? Um, other than the fact that I think I'm I'm short a song as I'm putting numbers <laughs> on them. Um, you didn't <laughs> <laughs> that i did count it's special um <laughs> yeah so i i might be skipping number two um did anything surprise me that i picked yes uh a, a, a band that i am personally not a fan of but i couldn't leave this song off because it's just facts so, so. with that why don't we get into number seven all right um, oh, so I'm starting here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, number seven, I have Baba O'Reilly. Um, you do not. I do. Meant to be part of a never finished rock opera. Um, it's even still used in TV, movies, and it speaks to the time of adolescence to all of us. So, yes, I, I do. I know that I know that we go to Jackie at this point, but I'll just knock this out real quick. And this, this, I, she did not look at mine. I did not look at hers. But number seven is Baba O'Reilly. Uh, uh huh. Uh, no, we we did not communicate on this at all. We did I'll, not. Talk and I'll be honest, I did not even know he was participating. I just thought it was the three of us. 
and he was recording and monitoring all. And yeah, I was the I was going to be the mediator, but yes, Baba O'Reilly, Teenage Wasteland. Interesting, very interesting. Okay, all right, fair enough. You go like people go. You know what other? You know, there's a few other Who songs, and does Who necessarily have to? But when they broke that down and decided to do that. And do that line and have Pete sing it, no less, to change yeah. it up. It was just a stroke of brilliance mm -hmm. in that song and became the rally cry for a generation. Ooh, facts. That's total facts. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I will then defer <laughs> down to Jackie. Since I don't have to go now. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's okay. Um, so uh, Scott will probably shoot me for this. Only, only because no. we've actually talked about this a couple times. My number seven is actually Metallica, Master of Puppets. Can't seven. Argue. Okay. It's actually number seven for me. Um, and here's the reason why it's number seven. Um, only because again, that is like the 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 song for a lot of metalheads is Master of Puppets. I mean, it's what seven minutes long, so. Um, I, for that song being seven minutes, I mean, even though it is it is a masterpiece, it's like okay, guys. So you have played for five and a half minutes of that seven minutes. No singing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but for the time that it came out, though, I'm sorry, every metalhead out there had this on their CD, had this in their walkie talk, the walkie talkies, but. Um, it was like the song for all metalheads that if you did not like the song, then you were not a metalhead. So, um, yeah, that's, that's my number seven. Yeah, it was everywhere. My number seven is Baba. No, I'm kidding. It's not. Um, <laughs> th though I, I do, if I did my rock and I, I'm, I'm going to go back and, and I'm going to do a strictly rock top 10 just for my edification because the who would be in there pink floyd would be in there yeah i'd um, like to know how much in common we have there yeah yeah i'll definitely dig into that because i you know i'll get back to it in a second mike i promise but you know i'll flip around on sirius and i'll go to classic rock and i'll try to to live in there and i'll set the favorites and there's you know a few tracks that come out it's like that's right you know like billy squire I, i'll listen to all of it so wow so number seven Kind of a tie-in to Metallica. Flotsam and Jetsam. Oh. Escape from Within. Eric what? A.K., the vocalist, um, who later in in 25 years later had a, a daughter, I think, that tried out for American Idol. And they kind of showed, you know, father was Eric A.K. of Flotsam and Jetsam. And there's probably very few people that that were watching American Idol that would even go, oh, OK. OK. Um, but that band's great. Um, and always th this has been one of my, um, again, a, a very long song, but just the emotion, just the vocals, just the I'm definitely while I love love the aggressive sound of the guitars and the metal when it comes to the singers and you'll see some other singers pop up in my list for sure that is probably no secret if you guys have talked to me for any amount of time or heard any of the songs I played know where my top vocalists are um, which didn't make it all onto this list but that's for another that's for another top ten right I don't know if I could do do top 10 vocalists to be totally honest with you guys but yeah number seven flotsam and jetsam escape from within if you haven't listened to that song in a while or at all check it out nice nice jotting that down right now is that <laughs> 80s or 90s because i need to know if i can put that on my show that that is 80s that it would is. be okay yeah. I do have a lot of Flotsam and Jetsam fans on my show, particularly uh, one, and I I don't know why we <laughs> fail to get them on. So something for me to think about for my next. Well, Wednesday. we need to make that happen now. Yeah. Okay. This leads us to number six. Eighty-eight. By the way, sorry, eighty-eight. Oh, eighty-eight. No, from no place for okay. Well, it's the ladies. I know that record actually. Um, yeah. I know that record. 
And I found my mathematical error and I do have 10 songs. Sorry. Nice. <laughs> I've recounted. Um, so it's funny that your number seven was Metallica because my number six is Metallica, but it is one. Mm -hmm. um, one in oh. terms of performance, writing and lyrics and uh the breakthrough video and i i just remember this being mm. my when i first moved here um the the area was metal heads where where i had come from i was more in guido land let's say um <laughs> guido land <laughs> guido land <laughs> i had come from you know east jersey staten island new york um so coming down here not realizing the influence of the area, like where you live, how music is part of where you come from. Um, not a lot going on down here. So a lot of house gatherings, woods gatherings, uh, you know, a little more underage drinking possibly. And Metallica was a very, very big part of that teenage uh, you know, period of time here, 15, 16, 17, uh, in the very early 90s, 90, 91. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, but that was, I think, more late 80s, more mid to late. Yeah, I mean, it came out then, but that's what we were listening to every day. Yeah. So one, Metallica one. Jack, number six. Number six for me, Ozzy Osbourne, Mr. Tinker Train. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Little Tinker Train. Nice. Yes. Wow. Oh, so anybody who knows me um, knows that I absolutely hate clowns. That just is like a, <laughs> a just, and to um, <laughs> stop it, just stop. So <laughs> um, don't give many ideas. Yeah, uh, gonna, I'm, I'm looking that, around for a clown. That's why I'm trying to word this very carefully. Um, as a practical joke one year, a whatever you want to call person, um, actually played that um, as I was walking in the house and I thought it was the total Jason thing. And I literally would not come in the house for a hot minute, believe it or not. Um, until, you know, this particular person stopped laughing long enough and said, dude, it's Ozzy. I went, oh, I wasn't paying attention to that. I was paying attention to the music part because to me it was creepy and it was all about the clown. So, but after I listened to it, I went, oh, this is some pretty good stuff right here. So yes, that is my number six song is Mr. Take Your Train by Ozzy. <laughs> no ideas, Michael. I'm just saying, don't think <laughs> it. Don't think it. What was that? Nothing. Don't think anything. Nothing, not a word. Nothing. All right, you go, Scott. Yes. So my number six from Metallica, this track is Battery. Oh. oh, oh. No way. We all had Metallica in seven and six. Yep. Wow. Wow. I think the song speaks for itself. Just the power, the energy, everything about it. Good, good point. Number six, um, this was one of those songs that could have very well been left off. Um, but when you, when I think about how it starts, the build, <coughs> and just how the crescendo, how it ends, how big it gets, um, and when I think think of the band i almost don't think about them per se because this band is famous for writing blues songs for for crying out loud and that's dream on by aerosmith okay you look at the bulk of their writing you gotta draw the line right you, you, got, you got kings and queens you got all of this blue stuff and then all of a sudden you have this six minute play, epic this opus this bigger than life track yep. that starts with him and a piano and ends with a massive massive symphony right 
couple breakdowns. You know, there's so many ebbs and flows. It's so epic compared to anything that they've ever done. And Facts. they've never done anything since. They've, like, they've written good ballads, but think about it. Had they ever done something like that? The answer is no. Yeah. Um, right. Which makes me think, you know, like how did this, it's like one of those moments when you see a band that plays a certain song and style and then there's a song that comes out of nowhere that there's just no way that this band is supposed to do this right it's, it's one of those moments where whether the, the the planets aligned or the lightning strikes or what have you that they create something that's never been and never will be created yeah. again Facts. yeah why, that's that's the main reason why it supersedes some of the other songs in the top 10 because it's a moment. It's an absolute moment. Yeah. And it's a moment for that band. True. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no. I, I love how you you detailed it out because I've heard that song a million times. But yeah, just and and never thinking, you know, it's obvious now that you said it, but you know, have they come close to anything? No. And and when you put that into the top rock songs. Or maybe songs of all time. It's it's going to be in there. It just oh, yeah. every everything you said. Just the 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 feel, the approach, just how they built it. It's almost like wow. There's a you know, not condoning drug use, but certainly that had a a magic dynamic formula for sure. True. <laughs> and nice. probably most of our top 50 <laughs> yeah. yeah rock songs of all time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they they would not have existed. Yes. Facts. That's so true. That is absolutely so true. So true. We are now halfway through this and doing not 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 too bad on timing, but let's get right into it with the number five track. Okay. That's Under Pressure, Queen and Bowie. Ooh. Probably okay. one of the most sampled songs of all time. Timeless and quality sing-along. Mm -hmm. And a song not that was never more. recorded together in the studio never recorded together in the studio nope just track never, mixed tracks never, they tracked and sent the tracks and sent the tape and then sent it back it was they were never face to face in the studio freddie did uh from what i understand david did his thing they recorded the song david does his thing and then freddie came back and then did some of the overlaying uh, uh, uh. but it, it's clearly spanned four generations um with without a hitch i don't think there's been uh, you know anybody confused about where it comes from who it is what it means <clears throat> in four generations okay I agree with absolutely yeah I agree with that. uh jack with all right my number six the raven is we're going back to so the we're at five Five. Five. Sorry. 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 <laughs> sorry. Um, my number five, um, Enter Sandman by Metallica. <laughs> More okay. Metallica. I'm sorry. I'm mm. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, of course, off of the Black Album, but again, I mean, Metallica was big anyway, but that song, that album just put them on a totally different planet. Um, mm -hmm. Like nobody literally could touch them for a hot minute. Um, after that, now granted, the next album after that didn't do so hot, but that's nor here nor there. But um, again, that was literally the metalhead song for you know a couple of years was Inner Sandman, and you know if, even if you look on like Apple, Metallica has the out of the ten, I think Metallica has like four or five of the most downloaded tracks in. And, and iTunes, um, and it's just it's just crazy, absolutely crazy. So, yes, Inner Sandman uh, from Metallica is my number five. Yes, Scott. So, nineteen eighty six. Oh, that was a bad year. Some some say some say who are these some, but some say that that was one of the greatest years in music. Yeah. Definitely, I would say when it comes to heavy and thrash there's yes. so many releases that that came out in 86 mm -hmm. i played a number of those on my show on 
this past Tuesday. And I will do part do next Tuesday because there was too many. There were too many just poured over. But one of the tracks and one of the bands that will forever, and if they stick to it, they'll never play again. I'm talking about Slayer and Raining Blood. <gasps> Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. No, I have no debate in that. Yeah. None. And the last time I saw them was an outdoor show in the rain playing Rain and Blood. Rain wow. and Blood. Wow. And how's that wow. just to kind of top off a career and a memory? As I <laughs> stare at the album on, on the wall, among many others, but <sighs> fantastic. We'll have to get a look at that wall in our one of our segments. Yes. Yes. Um, so number five again, it's a song that I'm not a fan of. How did make it on the list? I'm not a huge fan. <laughs> of the right? Song. I'm not a huge fan of the band. Um, I like them. There's some songs that I that I really do like, but as far as like would I put them on the turntable? Probably not. Um, but they cannot be denied as far as their influence their ability to write an amazing i mean amazing songs and all different kinds of songs and the first time we heard a dual guitar solo and probably next to comfortably, comfortably numb the second uh the second best uh guitar solo ever written that would be the eagles with hotel california Yes. Yep. No argument. Right, number five. Again, no. I'm not a. I love the story. I love the story in it. I'm not a fan of the vocals in it. I'm not. Um, but the 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 arrangement, uh, the way it's put together, the way it comes comes in, goes back out, comes back in again, and it ends with, like I said, next to comfortably numb. You can't deny it's the best solo ever ever written and recorded. Yes. Um, and you can't deny the live ability of that band and the fact that they could turn a great song. Glenn Fry was an amazing writer. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Hotel California. Number that was five. my number 11, if it means anything. It does. That's called an honorable mention. Yes. Right, well, I, I didn't know we were doing those. We're cooking with gas now. Uh, let me see. Number four. There's effects. Okay. Separate ways, journey. Oh, wow. okay. My man, my voice. Oh my God. I love Steve Perry. It has to be from an 80s chick. I, I love Steve Perry with all my heart. Um, this one was Steve Perry and Jonathan Kane. Uh, this was a hard pick because I just wanted a journey song in here. And so I actually leaned on my son a little bit for, for this one. Like what makes what journey song great? Because so many of them have, so yes. many quality elements. Um, so we came up collectively with separate ways. Uh, interesting facts about this one, written in less than 48 hours and played live before it was ever recorded. I believed it. Huh. I, believed it. I told you. So it was in, yeah. due to fan popularity, it was played live in shows mm -hmm. long before it ever got recorded for an album. I believe they played bits of that i believe they played that actually it was written uh the end of the very very long escape tour yes and they and they played it during the escape tour uh they basically said um there's got to be a more soulful way of looking at this uh perry told came the two began working on the song idea during the tour something they normally wouldn't do so I have to ask you a question as a person who loves Steve Perry, a person who loves Journey, and the obvious answer for many people would be don't stop believing for the way that it's constructed and the way that, you know, the melody, why separate ways over don't stop? Um, don't stop believing to me is too, I, I, not to put down arena rock, but um if we're talking about writing quality, uh, detail changes, 
Mm -hmm. I, I don't get half of that from don't stop believing as I do in separate ways. Interesting. Okay. All right. That is, that is, that's why it's your take. Interesting. Very interesting. Jack. All righty. Raven, what's up? My number four, uh, Blood Red Skies by Judas Priest. Okay. I cannot argue. Um, it is a just ridiculous uh, track. And just at that time, they were experimenting with harmonization and all that other stuff. And to me, that was like the perfect song for them to do it on. Um, type of song that gives me goosebumps every time I listen to it. And the fact that, you know, they wrote and did that song within two weeks was just astounding to me. So how come they don't play it a lot on the road? They, which is a shame, um, but absolutely phenomenal tune. If you're a priest fan. Number this one. Mr. No Con, number four. All right. So number four. Back to Metallica. <laughs> Master of Puppets. Wow. Okay. All righty. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, mine was way down there. Yeah. That okay. that to me is the number one Metallica song. And mm. True. For arguably, though it's not on this list, um, one of the top metal songs of all time. Mm. So since you guys are curators of the metal, um want to ask a question about when it comes to some of the songs that we heard, you know, the first album, Kill Em All, Ride the <laughs> Lightning. And when you hear something like Seek and Destroy, what is your take about the progression from Kill Em All to something like Master of Puppets when you heard that the first time? Mm -hmm. Taking what you've heard from the first two albums, like I said, of Connoisseurs of the Metal. Yeah. What was that like when you guys both, and this is for both of you, when you first heard Master of Puppets, Master of Puppets being fans of Metallica from the first record? Because I didn't get it. I'll be honest with you. I was late getting on. I, I actually mm -hmm. jumped on at Master Puppets and saw them open up with uh, with um, Burton and Alfarazzi in 86. So I was lucky enough to see them him and him play with the band. But what did you guys feel when you heard that, of course, knowing what you had known prior? You want to go first, Jack? I'll, I'll digress to you, sir. <laughs> sure. The um was I the biggest Metallica fan on the early releases? Probably not. I don't think so. Uh, it doesn't doesn't have the same didn't have the same effect. Mm -hmm. Um when oh. I heard Master of Puppets, like Ride the Lightning, like the progression, when I heard Master of Puppets, to me there was just so much more development, you know. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll agree the, with that. The, you know, if through through time, right? You go back, and then there's stories that Lars could even play drums when he joined with James, and there's probably some truth to that. Some debate his ability now, but that's <laughs> truly <laughs> people being haters because you can say what you want. You're the biggest, one of the biggest bands of the world. You know, hate all you want. He's still doing it. Yeah, um, put that to bed too, as, yeah. I mean, as a group, as as standing for ninety nine WNRR. Can we put that to bed? The guy created some of the best, absolutely, yeah, songs and drum licks in the songs that we've heard in a generation. I totally agree. You look um, at everything, yeah. The 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 the, um, the, it, the product. If you if you want it, it, it is, you know. But but not to look at it just as cut and dry as the product. But what Metallica did, and even now. 40 years later with 72 seasons and how they constructed the, the tour of, of no repeat weekend. That was all ours, you know, yeah. like just masterful in the approach. Um, right. So yeah, to, to me, it was always just shut up, you know, the, the, you know, you, you can hate all you want, yeah. but yeah, to, to answer and try to be as succinct as I can, which isn't always the case 
with Master of Puppets, there was just this growth and development of something that I had seen them in clubs. They were raw. They came along when they had a chance to kind of reflect more and really hone in on what they were doing. It was one in a way they were still certainly at that on that record not n- not everyone knew they they got the Aussie tour and that's when they were able to break through there was just something about it where wow this has developed this has grown there's so much to it there's so much more to it now it's not as raw it's more refined and you know to me i like kind of the complete package so it just everything came together to me on that song and that record um number four um there's a lady <laughs> oh, oh no uh, it, it, yeah i mean obviously um there's so many different songs that you could pick from my favorite band of all time uh next to cheap trick too uh but yeah i mean how could you be um, how could you deny that song not being in your top 10 rock songs of all their way to heaven as as overplayed and as you know like i said i would put 10 led zeppelin songs inside a top 10 of rock songs of all time but if you're going to pick one you obviously have to pick stairway if you um, heard the the uh have you heard hearts rendition of that Mm-hmm. Stairway is it is absolutely just ridiculously moving, kind of a little tear maybe you know. Can but... we see it live at some point on on a video? Yeah, Stairway. Yeah, yeah. They did it at um, they covered it for the uh the, the president's award of merit or something like that. Something like that, yeah, for Led Zeppelin. Yeah. And it was very yeah. heart moving with a choir, the whole nine yards. It was just Jason, happy. Jason, Jason played drums on it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, that was a great rendition. But they've they've covered whether they were the Love Mongers and covered Battle of Evermore, or actually covered Rock and Roll Live back uh, when they did the when Hart did the live album, which is really one of the best live albums that I've ever heard. So crisp. Um, they've been yeah they they, they've been one to follow and mimic zeppelin basically they're heroes and i believe they opened for them i believe they played a couple of festivals with them so yeah number so all right now we're getting into now we're getting into the grind three songs in your top 10 that mean the most to you and you really think are the best rock songs and or metal depending on what list you put together. And that's the great thing about the diversity of this is that. Yeah. I don't know if I like what we think. It's not just based on analytics. It's not, it's based on how we feel and what we love and what we play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, I don't know that. I don't know that yes. the songs that I love though, are the quality of the songs I'm talking about. So I really did what I think are the best written songs. I didn't give you my favorite songs. Right. Because the favorites <laughs> are terribly written. <laughs> no, some of my favorites are in here, but I'm going to say if I were to do a totally separate list and say Miss FX's favorite 80s songs that she plays, it is not these. Well, you have to do your own top 10 of Miss yeah. FX's favorite songs because they would be like not written well they 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 would be laughable um (laughs) or for the most but it's your favorite and that's what matters right yeah um this one i also share with my son um another album that brings me back to just some great moments spirit of radio rush now not everybody is a rush fan not everybody can be a rush fan um wait a minute did you just, did you, hold on over here. Did you, I put Rush put at rush number song three. In your top 10? I, I put a Rush song in my top 10. Now, <laughs> mind you, this was a little breakthrough because Rush, <laughs> Rush was doing a lot of, I don't want to say elongated, but like unnecessarily elongated songs and spirit of radio was kind of a, i would say a breakthrough for them um and they 
I think the thing that makes it different, a little set apart from the others, is the intricacy of the intro and the outro and the drum solos. True. I will definitely say that. Well, you don't want to get me going on talking about Rush, so because I'll be here all day. So I know you'll we say some great things, that. but I know that. you're not disagreeing with me, though. No, I'm not disagreeing. Um, and matter of fact, that now that I'm looking at my honorable mention of Tom Sawyer, and I think about that, I think about Permanent Waves. I go, yeah, this is the opening to is, Permanent Waves. Is right? is Spirit of Radio a more um, worthy and influential song than Tom Sawyer. In a different way. I have to, I've had to ask the other person too, who is a fan of Rush. But so, hold on, hold on. In a different way though, one lyrically and, and influentially, like politically, I guess, mm -hmm. and one musically, sonically. This one is more sonically influential. Yeah, no, no, I just... Considering I had one. So I want to ask Scott, who I also know likes Rush. Um, I do. If we were to say which one was more of a in, more of an influential song, i.e. a breakthrough, um, Spirit, because it broke the mold of the last few records, or Tom Sawyer, because it was sonically way different i'm gonna to say tom sawyer okay that's why i had it where i had it because it was just something so different than what they had done before i do like spirit of the radio i was trying to find the record and i couldn't get to it quick enough so um but no i i think that's a fantastic song too um again rush would be in my Top 10 rock songs. Absolutely. Maybe more than one. So, all right. Really? Yeah. Jackie, number three. Already, my number three by Megadeth is uh, Judgment Day. Okay. Uh, if you're going to go Megadeth, I would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would say yeah. that song by far. Oh. It is just again. It's um, it's off of euthanasia, and you know, to me, there was like no bad song off of I off of that. I just think that Dave just took it to the house on that particular EP. Um, but this is one of those songs that is not in rotation with uh, Megadeth, but when they do throw it out there, it is just phenomenal. So, um, the riffs, everything is just. You know, you know, Dave's always a storyteller anyway, but yeah, that is definitely one of the songs that I jam to when I work out. So <laughs> definitely for sure. Nice. Scott. Mm -hmm. All right. Coming in at number three. Queen's Reich. Queen of the Reich. Oh, I probably could have put a few different Queen's Reich songs in, but when I when I look at Okay, okay, no, that wasn't it. All right. Cool. What I heard first and mm -hmm. I believe it was Friday night videos that was on like at 1230 on channel four NBC. So, so what, you know, depending yeah. on where you live, whatever the NBC affiliate was, mm -hmm. it was channel four for me in California at the time that came on. It was like, wow. And I was hooked and I am to this day and they are my all time favorite band. Um, all time favorite singer with zero Excuse me, I don't have a sneeze card. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I would do the same thing, but I'd have to take my coat off. So it's it's in there too. It's same. Um, oh, really? Phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal. Um, saw Jeff wow. Tate about two months ago. Came through Nashville, based in <sighs> East. Sixty three years old. Had a heart surgery. What two years ago? Tours of the world. He's like in Spain. Today mm -hmm. he he and he does these. I, I'm I'm compelled to eventually do this. I pro I probably go, have to go by myself. I don't think I need anybody to go with me to do <laughs> a you know a a vacation with Jeff Tate where he would just sit and play guitar, you know, and sing songs. That would be phenomenal. Aren't they um, running something? Like, he's running something like that. He is. Yeah. 
Yeah, he does different different ones throughout the years, but uh, it's going bye bye for a little while. Yeah. However, Queen's Reich, Queen of the Reich. Uh, you know, you could say Queen of the Reich slash Lady War Black. Same era, same EP. Um, phenomenal. So influential in me as far as just what I wanted to do musically, um, vocally, everything, everything about it. Wow. They changed the game. Yeah. Yeah. They did. You don't have Dream Theater without Queen's Reich. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you don't have true. you don't have that's a lot of those bands that followed after that without Queen Strike. Mm-hmm. I think of them as one of those like rock opera storyteller bands as well. Like you can really see imagery when you listen to the songs in a good running order. Absolutely. No, I think that, that yeah, that's a, a perfect mm-hmm. characterization. You sit back and put your headphones on and listen. You visualize. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. 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 Um. <clears throat> like some of the deep cuts on the warning too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, number three already talked about before. Um, you heard it, and you know when you first heard the first part of it, you were like, "Uh, what the heck is this?" and blah blah blah. And then you heard the bri- the uh, the pre-chorus. There is no pain. You are receiving. Wow. And then all the orchestration in the back of it and then leads you to I have become comfortably numb. You think about that build and then it goes back down. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Just a little pinprick. And then again, working up, working up. Yeah building it and building it and then leads to one excuse me of two amazing solos what happened there (coughs) oh man excuse me but yeah number three comfortably numb by rush i mean by pink floyd sorry wow comfortably numb by pink floyd number three (laughs) great choice great choice all right, um, we're down to two. <clears throat> so remember before you said, does anybody have something on their list that surprised them? And I said, I feel like I have something on my list that I'm putting on here because it belongs on there, but not one of my favorite bands and you're going to kill me. And I don't, so I, I don't have a great reason for this other than I just know it belongs here. Whole lot of love, Led Zeppelin. Okay. Yeah. Um, so no no explanation needed. Is that a good explanation? <laughs> I um, think it is. Yeah. Think but know. again, not one of my favorite bands. Nothing I sought, nothing I bought. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely belongs in the top 10 and definitely top five of all time best written rock songs, rock genre songs. Yeah. Okay. This ought to be a good one, Jack. Number two. <laughs> so we're going to go back to Queens, right? And I actually picked the Operation Mind Crime album. Uh, the uh, whole damn thing. Look, all at, all it, thing. <laughs> look at you breaking the rules already. <laughs> I have one of those on my guilty pleasures, so she's oh, allowed. Oh, so Operation My Name is the song on the album, correct? Yes. It is. It is. Thank you. Thank so are you. you going with the song on the album or are you going with the album? The whole damn album. Really? Seriously? Are we gonna do this now? Are you saying <laughs> okay. we gonna do this? So uh, it's obvious. I mean, they're they're one of the very few bands who actually created something, a whole story out of the album and you know look how many times that thing went freaking triple platinum you know just for that so um the follow-up didn't do so well ish um but we, we, it, we don't want to talk about that we don't want to talk about that <laughs> but not, yeah. um, the 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 fact that you know what they did will never ever be repeated ever ever again um it's just just amazing so that is my number two 
Absolutely. Yeah. That, that whole record's phenomenal. And being able to see that live with Metallica on the Injustice for All Operation Mind Crime, if we were doing mm-hmm. top 10 live acts or live amazing occurrences that right there yeah there's a all right number two number two turn up the night black set oh oh, no there's a story behind this Um, my one and two have been one and two for as long as i can remember and i feel confident saying they will never change because they're that impactful in my life so 82, when Mob Rules came out, I remember hearing it on a eight track. Remember that back in the day, the eight track. And yeah. Pop it and change the tunes. And I have very few memories of my brother, but this is one of them. Um, and he had it, and then I went and bought it. But the beginning of Turn Up the Night, the guitar, that set me down a path into metal and hard rock from that day going forward. So January of 82, listening to it for the first time, there's something I want to do with music. Didn't know at 12, didn't start singing until I was like 15, um, but it just gave me that direction of this is the style of music that I love. Here's a question for you. Um, Rodney James Dio, the better version of Sabbath? Yes, absolutely. I think Ozzy Solo is better than Ozzy Sabbath, if I can say that. Hands down. I just, I just did. I just did. Yeah. I, I think you could I think you could take the first two albums and I agree with you. Mm-hmm. I think I absolutely agree with you. I think yeah. my fans are on that page as well. Mm. Okay. So where were we at? Number two? Yeah, number two. You're on number two. All right. This is this is gonna be a shocker in this list. Uh and I was surprised because when I put this originally and I put this in the honorable mention, and then I started putting it up against this song. And I went and I put it up against this song. And I went, hmm. And then I put up against the next song and I was like, you got to be kidding me. And then I went up again and I went, oh, come on. And I got to a point where I was like, you know what? Is this Bananarama? Absolutely. (laughs) It is Bananarama. Uh, Nice. Cruel Summer. Uh, Nice. (laughs) Oh. Wow. Sorry. He's kidding. (laughs) Oh. My my apologies to all the Bananarama fans out there. Yeah. Um, but, uh, based on a story, um, one of the most descriptive songs I've ever heard, and the build up, the energy that's released in this song, I think is some. I don't know if the energy released at a certain point has ever been caught on recorded in recorded music. Uh, and that's when the whole thing burst out. The highways jam with broken heroes on a last chance power drive. I mean, it's just balls out aggression and emotion. And the more I listen to it, and I am not a Bruce fan. I am not. I like some of his stuff. I have an appreciation for some of his stuff. There's some stuff that I can't stand. Uh, there's some there's some amazingly written songs. But I get chills every time I do listen to Born to Run. Okay. Nice. I'm not a Bruce fan. I get and when that when he hits that 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 part when he comes out of dun 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 I uh, you like chicken skin. You can't it's undeniable if you listen to it and everything that's going into that part and he comes out of it, 
one, two, three, four. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think about it and I get chilled. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a huge fan. I'm not, you know, like I don't travel. I've never seen Bruce, put it that way. Where, yeah. I'm probably the old person in Jersey next to Christine who's <laughs> never seen Bruce. And I could care less. I, sonically, I guess you're right um, mm-hmm. about the buildup, about <clears throat> the, I should say about the song construction. Yeah. Right. The song construction has merit. Mm mm-hmm. Yeah, when I and when I and you see when I put it up against all these, where's that? Give me that moment in that song, and I go against all of them, and I'm going up the list. Give me the moment of that song where I go, <gasps> and I catch my breath. <laughs> Give me that moment. Where's that moment? Where's that emotional moment? And that makes me want to dive deep and find my Richard Mark song that does that. <laughs> <laughs> there's a Richard Mark song that does that. Okay. All right, guys, we are, before we get into uh, one word we're going to have fun with, um, we are down to our number one for different criteria reasons. Yeah. Guys, uh, we're obviously going to, we've obviously put this up. You guys are watching this right now. First of all, thank you for watching this. Uh, our first, our pilot, if you will. And uh, feel free to comment. Good, bad, or indifferent. For whatever reason, you listen to everybody's top 10 for whatever reasons we put it out there and we want you to comment on it. We're asking you good batteries. Please. We yeah. don't care. Please don't- let us, let us know what your top 10 is because but just what- make sure you comment on the music and not on the uh, double chin that artifact says oh. I have in my video <laughs> angle. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was going there. <laughs> but if you want to comment about that too, please. Yeah. Uh, really? Oh, stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> um again thanks because it, it, ultimately it does it affect what we all do on our shows and what we play no we're gonna play what we want anyway yeah the bottom line is I, that i'm gonna play with my guys here line. what you guys hear on 99 wnrr <laughs> it will have an effect on what you guys hear on the auto dj so thank you very much <laughs> and so we go with miss effects boop right to here and here. your number one number. your number one Easy. Bohemian Rhapsody. Queen. Record breaking length of radio play. Oh, God, unique. Yes. Operatic. The most amazing live performances of any song ever. Mm-hmm. The most people to ever sing a song, I think, in unison ever. Um just no doubt the best mm-hmm. i think it's the best song right now on the planet existing bohemian rhapsody um and i'll give the floor to my uh uh my um compadres in a second because i'm not going to belabor the point uh i again same as i <laughs> number one okay there will, okay and if i think if most people put together uh, a top 10 of rock songs this would probably make their top 10. This would not, not only make the top 10, this would be their number one. There's no other song like it. There will never be another song like it. There will no. never have, because the experimentation is gone. And I love experimental bands now. I love Pineapple, you know, Pineapple Deep and what they've done. Uh, you know, I love a lot of the music that's been, that's been coming out. But. Agreed. The sheer. Yeah the sheer creativity out of nowhere and to trust it and to move along with that and to build something that's never been done before as a section of opera and then into an, a ripping uh, res- uh, resolution uh, when you come out of it, to make all that cohesive and to ma- have it make sense, um, there'll never be another song like it. Okay. Never. It's it'll to me it'll never be topped. They can you can do whatever they can do put out whatever they want to. It'll never be topped. Bohemian Rhapsody number one song of all time for me. Jackie, the yep. floor is yours. Ha ha! It may come as a shock to some people, but I've mentioned it a lot on my show. Along the Watchtower by Jimi Hendrix. Oh, um, okay. I. 
cannot tell you why. I don't know why. But every time I play that track, I get goosebumps. Mm -hmm. um, and Jimmy was ahead of his time anyway. I don't care what anybody says. Definitely. Um, but uh, the fact, again, that you could literally sit with a glass of tequila at a bonfire and salute Jimmy because of the fact that this song talked about life, you know, um, and just just an incredible, incredible track. Again, there will never, ever be one like it. You know, there were, he, just obviously may he rest in peace, but just a phenomenal track. I mean, and just when you hear the first opening chords of the song, you already know what it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, uh, and uh, it has been a thing <clears throat> for years and it will continue. So, yeah, so that's my number. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, that would be, I'm some, uh, it was something that I toiled with to, to actually have it in the top 10 and it was close to being in there. Um, it is, and I think, agree with you, it is his greatest track. Uh, mm -hmm. especially when I'm listening and I'm watching Forrest Gump and that song gets played as they're <laughs> sitting in Nam and I, and you just get the chills all over again. And so, yeah, yeah I, absolutely. And again, it's the time. It's the time it came out. Um, what? A song of, of statement, of revolution. Uh, <laughs> it meant so much to so many. Mm -hmm. Absolutely stellar pick. Absolutely. Absolutely. Scott, my dear, what do you have, sir? All right. So, Bring us home, buddy. Bring us home. July of 1981. 11 oh. years old. This was also on a cassette. Never heard this band before. Didn't know anything about it. Really didn't know anything about, like, rock, metal music. And when I heard this opening track, it forever just stayed in my head and will forever... Unchained, a uh, fair warning. Yes, is, is my number one and has been and will be number one. Yes. Period. Forever Just the 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 impact. Yeah, I I the the impact that had again. Just with turn up the night and with Unchained, those together just. Gave me purpose is probably a little overstated, but it certainly helped me kind of shape an identity of of what was interesting sonically, right? And following it, and again that opening riff. Every time I hear it, I get a smile and just turn up the radio. Mm -hmm. You're not uh, their best track by far mm. for me. Yes, absolutely. Jackie. You know, so, so some some don't like. Some, sorry, some say that record, you know, it, it didn't sell as much as the others. It was darker, which I liked. It didn't matter. Um, I love it. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's just like, I, I, that's my number one Van Halen record. That's my number one Van Halen song. Jen, your think? top two songs are frequently requested around the same time by my listeners mm -hmm. for my same show. In fact, I want to say that I had both of those play the week before Artifacts' birthday show. So just three short weeks ago. Um, nice. I, I do believe, I recall both of them were played on the Bad Hair Days. And by customer request, by customer request, oh my gosh, by fan by request. request. Yes. Not customer, by yes. my doing. <laughs> That's awesome. That's Jack, great. what do you think? Best song by Van Halen? My favorite song by Van Halen is Mean Street. Same record? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, great I track as well. Yeah, absolutely love that track. And again, it's on my workout rotation. <laughs> <laughs> I like her workout. Yeah, you know what? I need as to much, adopt that. As much as I, as much as I love the punk value of the first record, "On Fire" to me is a ch -ch 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 -ch, all that stuff. Those mm -hmm. tracks are amazing, uh, but when he came up with that chord progression that riff forget it Absol forget absolutely solid choice yeah. and definitely should be bad me bad artifacts should be in my top 10 how <laughs> dare you as jackie would say <laughs> not Here put that in your top 10 okay but like you said you could go ahead go on and on like yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. We so, each probably have a hundred songs that we could say we want in our top 10. Uh, but there's only 10 in this list. And that's what <laughs> makes it that good. That's how tough it was. We yeah, spent right. a month trying to do this. We so, dabbled <laughs> very well. So two for Bohemian Rhapsody, Along the Watchtower, on chain, Guys, we are out. Thank you so much. Comment below. Subscribe because there's going to be more. Wherever that button is, there's going to be more coming to you from 99WNR. Coming soon. Guys, see you later. Thanks. We out.